is up? It's Brandy Giz. I am back on your screen. Yes, girl. So first, let me just say, I just want to thank each and every one of you all for your love, your prayers, your comments that you left on my last video. I'm telling you, it works. So I just want to thank each and every one of you all for messaging me. Some of you all messaged me um, behind the scenes. Some were funny. Some were just uplifting, encouraging. We are here to encourage one another. At least I'm here on this platform to encourage, inspire, and you know, just motivate you in the right direction. Yeah, that's what I am here to do. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for that. I have like a, a list of things that I want to talk to you about, but I don't want to spend too much time on each one of them because there's just so much that I want to say. I'm looking at my notes right now and I'm like, oh my God, where do I begin? If you didn't watch the video, I admonish you to go watch when I first started the process of the surgery. Before I begin this video, um, I just want to say if this video is too graphic, too much for you, you know you can always turn the channel. But this is for those of you all, because I've had a lot of messages stating that a lot of you all are headed towards having the surgery done. I want to say in my Instagram alone, I think I probably have about around about six, seven, you know, women that are having it done this month, next month. And then someone told me that they were having it done in April. So I wanted to get this here video out so that I can encourage you, inspire you, help you get through this process. Because what I want to say is not a lot of women are talking about this. At least when I go on YouTube, I find a few, a few uh, women that talk about this. But I was always brought up, you know, it's it's hush hush. Don't don't tell nobody. You know, I even was brought up to the point of when you came on your menstrual, not to even tell nobody. And it was just like a hush hush thing. And I'm like, why are we hushing about it? We're women. Women have menstruals. They bleed, and that's that. You know. So. I am trying to get away from that hush hush and keeping things undercover and all of that. I just, I'm over it. You know what I'm saying? So I am going to be the one who, if you Google um, hysterectomy, I want to come up so that you guys can know the real deal. You know what I'm saying? And I try not to like keep anything from you all. So I just wanted to say yeah, well, that up to it is because I have fibroids and uh, I don't know. I just felt what I was feeling off. And I was getting headaches, always cold. Um, what else? I was getting headaches, always cold. I knew my arm was low, but I would try to, you know, take different stuff. And that's one, that's one of the reasons why I bought the Black Girl Vitamins. And I'm not going to say that they are good vitamins. They were okay. Would I repurchase them? I don't know. I don't know. They wasn't all of that to me. But it might work for you. But that was one of the reasons why I was starting to, you know, I started taking my iron pills. But my iron was low. I was feeling cold when I came on my menstrual. Um, well, there were signs, you know, that led up to this. The first signs was like really bad menstrual cramps. I would have them to the point where like um, medicine wouldn't work. Medicine wouldn't work. I would take Midol. I would take ibuprofen. I just give me the give me the extra strength. Give me the eight hundreds. And I'm like to the point where I was like, I would wake up in the middle of the night just like rocking back and forth. I'm a rocker. I always rock sometimes when somebody preaching or something really good. I'm into it. That's just me. That's what I do. I don't know. That's probably. I don't know something about me if you didn't know I'm a rocker but girl I was rocking in the bed girl and then my husband he was like rubbing on my back he used to rub my back and try to make me feel good and we would wake up in the middle of the night and, I, and then would be them days where I'm like I'm not going to work and I'll have to call in and I'm like this is not real but you know when I had my son the menstrual cramps kind of like subsided but then I was going like getting on birth control and different things to try to like alter and everything. And I don't like birth control. I don't like, I don't like birth control. I don't like to be, cause I remember I was on one birth control and it made me moody and just like ugh, lash out and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, I am not going to get on a birth control. I just felt like mm, it wasn't for me. 
it might be for you i'm not gonna knock you but it just didn't work for me so i was just like whatever happened happened but then my stomach started like kind of protruding out a little bit and i started feeling headaches and sometimes i would be nauseous um i would always be cold it wasn't and a tw it was in 2022 I was just like something ain't right I'm gonna shock I'm gonna I think in 2022 I started taking like vitamins and whatnot trying to see if it's the vitamins am I eating wrong because I know my eating habits can be a little janky you know I'm not eating right all the time and I ain't gonna lie to you I'm trying to get I'm trying to get a little bit better but girl don't hold me to it so I thought it was maybe I needed vitamins so I went and got vitamins and that didn't do it I was starting to get my menstrual but and I still I mean I would get my menstrual but then it would be heavy you know what I'm saying so I went from using like I would just have to use a tampon and I go about my business and I would just change it you know throughout the day but then I started I went from regular to super and then I went from super plus and I'm like, okay, it's getting a little bit heavy. Then I went to the point when it started getting to the point where I needed like ultra. And ultra is like the, the thickest tampon. And I'm like, why am I bleeding so heavy? And it's just like, it's not normal. It was just too much for me. And I'm like, this ain't even right. So, you know, I had went, I made sure um, I went to the doctor and I admonish you all ladies to go to the doctor. You know, don't be just staying at home thinking that things are going to get better. Things are going to change or maybe I eat some beets and I'll be okay. Or maybe I use this remedy. No, go, it's okay. Go to the doctor. If you have insurance, use your insurance and go to the doctor. So get your physical and also go to the gynecologist, get your breast done, you know, examine all of that. Go to the doctor. Yeah. So and back to me. I went to the doctor. I had my physical. Everything was fine with the physical. But then I went to the gynecologist. And, you know, my pap smear, they, it came out all good, all gravy. But when I told him what I was experiencing, and I wasn't going to my doctor. And I've had my doctor for the longest, ever since Amir was born, because he delivered Amir. But anyway... Um, to make a long story short, you know how you make that appointment and then he's kind of busy So you'll go and you'll see that nurse practitioner. That's what I did wrong move You know stay faithful to you know who you who you rock with I, I really didn't care for the nurse practitioner, but you know, she was just not doing what needs to be done and there were things that there, there, there were things that were there in place, but she didn't see it until I was like, let me make an appointment with my regular OBGYN. That's when I made the appointment. He ran some tests. Uh, and the first thing that he wanted to do was an ultrasound. So I did the ultrasound and that's when it showed that there were some fibroids. So then he wanted to have another test done. Girl, if I remember the name, I'll probably like list it here, but it was like some kind of test where they go in with this long probe and they uh, do a biopsy as well girl that is so painful so painful that's when you're able to see and it determined that i had fibroids and then they were different sizes and girl found out my uterus was big and that's why my stomach sometimes you be wondering like why is my stomach all big looking like i'm pregnant i didn't really look bad but even you know i was it wasn't flat it all makes sense and i was just like wow then and to know what was going on with me was like okay and so i knew there was something that had to be done i wasn't gonna get on any birth control i didn't want to know myomectomy because i don't want you scraping out nothing and for it to come back i didn't want that so i was like you know what i have children which i have only one one son which i'm fine with i didn't want any more kids i promise you me and my husband we don't want any more um I'm blessed with one and I'm at that age where girl you ain't trying to have no kids at four how, how old am I 46 47 I think 47 I'm at that age I don't want any more kids I'm good I'm at that age where why am I bleeding heavy like this uh-uh so let's just go ahead and take care of this and I, he was in agreement I was in agreement I didn't have to tell him but he kind of like we were we just met and that was the best decision for me and that's why i say this is my journey and you do your journey and i say that to say because everybody has 
you know you do what works for you so that's what I'm trying to say you do what works for you I did what worked for me and I feel so much better I'm like two weeks in I had the surgery two weeks ago and everyone that I've spoke with that had a hysterectomy never regretted it and I'm two weeks in I'm still healing I'm in my healing process I'm feeling really really good I'm in my healing process and I feel great you know there are times when like if I wash my hair and I'm in the shower I get a little tired you know but it's all good I feel good um you know you get a little tired but you're going through this process of trying to you know heal from the organ that's been taking out your body so um I'm just thankful you know what I'm saying so um I told you about the symptoms I told you about the family and friends they didn't know you know a lot of people I, I'm more so I'm private uh, for people around me but I don't know when it comes to you all I like to share so that I can help it's like the people around you they don't be paying no attention to you you know what I'm saying until it's like girl you had to do what you had to get what done you know and I had like some friends that have had a hysterectomy so um I'm not gonna say their name because they might not want you to know that they have one but I was able to call one and she gave me some good um some good advice and everything and I chewed the meat spit out the bone I wasn't really too like you know how people give you uh what they've been through but that don't necessarily mean that you're going to experience that and it's a lot of things that I heard here on YouTube and it will frighten the mess out of you but I'm so glad that I was able to listen to a few of you all um speak on hysterectomies and whatnot because that wasn't my story when I think of hysterectomy I think of oh my god I'm gonna be in major pain I'm gonna be laid up in the bed like a, a, a zombie or a mummy you know what I'm saying wrapped up and whatnot and then one girl said she was bleeding and I'm like why is she bleeding after she they even took the stuff out where is it coming from you know I just had so many questions but um I just wanted to first I know I'm gonna be all over the place with this stuff because my notes is just all over but I did have a um I got this little folder that they give you when you get out of the surgery but I want to tell you the exact surgery that I had which was a laparoscopic hysterectomy it was done by my doctor along with the da Vinci which is a robot to assist with um the procedure or the surgery and it was outpatient y'all surgery so I didn't have to stay in the hospital but I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself let me make sure um the things that you will need for a surgery that's another thing first of all y'all be buying all kinds of stuff on Amazon y'all already trying to influence me and I was like I'm not for the okie doke so I made sure I got the things that um I just knew I might need all that other stuff y'all girl y'all be trying to buy a whole nother room with a whole nother body pillow and this and that do what works for you okay and i say that to say that most of that stuff that y'all were saying that we needed we didn't really need okay or at least i didn't need it and so um i'm gonna show y'all this is the first thing that i purchased really quick was a blood pressure cuff and the little monitor so I, so I could monitor my blood pressure because my blood pressure was up you know what I'm saying but I noticed that ever since I've had the surgery my blood pressure isn't up like it normally would be another thing I noticed is I don't get cold as fast you know what I'm saying and girl I used to eat a lot of ice I ain't been craving for ice like I used to but I'm gonna be honest with you all I still love hospital ice okay so I think I'll probably um, still eat hospital ice but not as much as I used to so I'm gonna show y'all this is the bag that I came home with but I'm gonna show you the stuff that you are definitely gonna need maybe um by you you know going to the hospital they will give you a belly binder or abdominal binder and it comes in a box like this and it looks like this this is the one that I had washed I don't have it on now I made sure that they gave me two so that I, I wouldn't have to purchase it on Amazon because your girl still need to save her coins okay 
so the a domino binder is great to have so like if you go on amazon or wherever you shop maybe you might want to have them to give you because the hospital have it girl put it on my insurance get you a belly binder from the doctor okay and i had asked him that and he's so detailed and just remember some things because i had called and spoke with his nurse this was like a week before the surgery girl when i woke up from the surgery the abdominal binder was on me and that wasn't always the case with some of his other clients and i know particularly of another young lady who had the surgery and they didn't put it on her so i was really thankful when i woke up i looked down like oh but we're gonna get to that in a few minutes oh my god this video is gonna be long this video might be like 30 minutes so just sit back and relax so this my journey is a little bit long okay all right so so there are some things that you need to get before you um have the surgery and i'm going to show you really really quick that he suggested which is the the miralax that was like number one and i needed to take that the day before because um the day before the surgery i had to be on a clear liquid diet so you can't eat after 12 midnight well, say for instance if i had the surgery on a thursday that tuesday i couldn't eat after 12. so that wednesday i had to be on a clear liquid diet and i had to drink some of this miralax which isn't bad it doesn't really taste like nothing and this is the stuff that you are going to need my suggestion to you is kind of like tidy up the areas of where you're staying i had to make sure that i had like a change of you know you just want things to be clean so i tried to um clean up the bathroom that uh i tried to clean up the upstairs bathroom and make sure that the sheets were nice and clean and just try to get uh, you know things a little bit tidy because when you come home you ain't gonna be able to do all of that i swear you not so uh the milk of magnesia you'll need that it just helps because the medication that they give you during the surgery and all this other stuff it uh constipates you and you don't want to be constipated they also recommended the gas x and that really don't didn't work for me so I had this on deck because I heard one lady talk about uh, Faison and this works wonders honey and it relieves gas and then it's not gas necessarily of you having to uh, pass gas or flatulence because you know you got it it's just the 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 um the gas that they pump your stomach up to actually see everything so it actually when you're laying on the table it pumps up they put gases in you to pump it you know up your stomach I think they release some of it but not all of it not all of it goes so it's like when you come home you feel like you are weighing a ton it's like your stomach feels so bloated and just feel so uncomfortable and it's like you want to pass gas to get that out of you and sometimes it travels it travels up to your clavicle your your shoulders I remember one time it was under my arm I was like you know I was just one day i was just like oh my god this is hurt and my husband came upstairs because you know and he'd be in his little man room and so he came upstairs and he had the little gun and he was you know trying to massage the back and girl i have not had any gas after that and i had called my friend i was like girl when is my stomach gonna go down why my stomach look bigger than it was before i went into the surgery and she was like it's gonna go down you know she was just so like real calm about it and i'm like why is she so calm something she ain't telling me she 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 ain't right but you know it all turned out it was all good um what else i did get the cold lace but i really didn't need that oh as far as like being constipated i really wasn't constipated during this process um every now and then i would take like a miralax if i just want like everything that just make sure it all comes out but uh, for the most part, I'm thankful that I wasn't like going into like that constipation mode or anything like that. And um, I did get the iron pills, but girl, I don't like these iron pills. These are by Nature Made, and I had to get 65 milligrams. And I am in the process of trying to find me some more. Yeah, my battery had died. But there are two items that the doctor had prescribed me, and that was ibuprofen, 800 milligrams, and I had to take this as need it and i also he prescribed me and this will let you know because it's still in the bag 
is some hydrocodone and it says take one tablet by mouth every six hours as needed for pain and i am so thankful that during this process i have not had any pain uh any pain like you would think be like oh oh my stomach none of that i did not have any pain so when i got out of surgery i remember it just felt like a tunnel and i could hear people talking but it just seemed far away and i was like coming too and i remember the nurse said uh the surgery went well honey i think i was in rec i wasn't in recovery i just came i don't know where i was girl i ain't gonna even lie to you i just remember coming out of surgery and hearing your surgery went well and i just remember i couldn't open my eyes because it's just like i'm sedated i'm jacked up you know and i'm like oh i can't open my eyes and i remember looking i seen you know i looked a little bit and i'm like oh to god be the glory girl next thing i started feeling nauseous i was like okay i need your help because i seen her walk away when i did open my eyes a little bit okay i'm feeling a little nauseous okay i need your help come on hurry up and i just i just vomit over the rail and so the next thing you know it was like cut next thing i'm in another room but i'm just like this is hilarious because i didn't see feel or knew that i was going to another area um and when i went to the other area i remember the ladies were saying scoot over and come on and i remember trying to move and walk girl that was the crazy experience but it was just such i just knew that the hand of god was on my life the hand of god was on me from the beginning to the end he made that process so smooth and i just thank him for it and i just pray for continued health but um what else i wanted to say so i was just so thankful that it went well they didn't have to cut they didn't have to give me a cesarean section cut whatever you know they was able to remove everything um with no problems but it was just great um you know before you have your surgery your surgeon does come and talk to you i just want to let you all know that he did come and talk to me and another thing i want to like let you all know that when you do have your surgery they put something in your muscles it's like a pain reliever um and they administer some kind of pain relief it's like they it's not freezing the muscles but i can't even explain it but they do something to your muscles girl and i was just like i was here for it i wasn't nervous or anything i just wanted to it to be over because I was I didn't want no fibroids living in me I don't want to be walking around with fibroids I just I wanted it out and it just felt like afterwards I felt heavy and everything but as days goes on I am really realizing that there was something in me that um, in, in so many words it just felt like my body was rejecting it and it just it was just telling me like girl something ain't right you know and I, that's one of the reasons why i was like let me go get checked out the next thing that i suggest that you do is get you some real nice pjs and the reason why i say that is because so that you can at least look halfway decent if company was to come over or whatever the case may be but the majority of the time is that you are you should be relaxing and taking it easy and that's what i'm doing i'm relaxing and taking it easy walking is good for you but not too much take it easy i can say that your body will tell you and you need to listen to your body i know that much so while i was you know when i first went to, to have the surgery they make you wipe your body with some kind of solution it looks like it looks like baby wipes but you wiping down your body and everything and they make you put on these compression stockings you know because they're putting something on your legs so that it will massage your legs so that you won't have any blood clot good and they made me wear these like for two days after the surgery the anesthesia is gonna make you feel so loopy that you just want to lay down but that next day baby you gonna want to get in the shower and i have taken a shower every day after that because you just I don't know it's just a difference it's just you just want to get in the shower put it like that I threw these in a bag that's you know if you feel nauseous you can uh throw up in um they also threw these in the bag but you can't flush them in the toilet so it's just a ready bathe fresh bathing cloth and it cleans moisturizes and soothes 
pH balanced and hypoallergenic and uh, it just says do not flush but it's fragrance free but it smells good so they gave me three packs of those and this is my friend when um you get out of surgery I couldn't use the bathroom and they want you to void which is have a, a, a urinate and by me having a catheter in me girl I couldn't urinate so it took a while and I explained that story on my uh, other video I couldn't use it so she gave me this bottle the nurse and I filled it up with warm water and I just kept squirting it and trying to use the bathroom but you know later on I was able to go because if you can't go they'll end up putting another catheter in you and that's what I did not want I did not want another catheter because that sucker don't feel good it feels uncomfortable but um, yeah, that is all that I wanted to share with you all. Um, a, a lot of you all were saying, um, get this kind of tea, get that kind of tea, get the tea that you like. But for me, I was just drinking green tea. And tea makes you feel good. There's another thing that you might end up having to get. I don't like these, but I was eating the Lutens. And that's that cherry, it's like a lozenge. I don't like these but you will need some kind of lo uh, throat lozenge because when you come out of surgery um, your the way you talk you be raspy and it just sounds so what is the word I'm looking for it you feel, it feels like you have mucus in you and I guess that's from that uh, is it a trach or a breathing tube maybe the breathing tube girl so you can tell I ain't no nurse but um you have that breathing tube in you so you need something to soothe your throat a lot of people were saying that they had like um uh, their throat was really really irritated and i was glad that i didn't ex i experienced a little bit of irritation but um that's what you know sucking those lozenges really help and you need to get you some tissue boxes because you are going to want to like uh bring up the it feels like thick film like when you have a cold so you want to have a uh, tissue by you uh, like a Walmart bag and put the tissue in and stuff like that but all this other stuff that you know people were saying you might need girl you don't need all that you already have pajamas um, you're gonna be at home for a good two to six you're gonna be at home for about two months so you can wear the pajamas you have, make sure they're clean, and um, wear your belly binder. Uh, one of my friends was telling me, you know, um, that during this process you might be emotional. And I'm like, girl, no I'm not. <laughs> the only thing is, I want this up out of me. I don't know what this is, but you just want, you just want whatever it is that's causing either the pain the the heavy bleeding and the heavy bleeding was not gonna stop it was not gonna stop it was gonna continue until probably um when i go through menopause and girl that was probably a while it would look like it wasn't going nowhere no time soon i just knew that girl this was messing with the quality of life this was messing with my walk my walk my quality of life bleeding heavy and not able to go different places not able to do certain things and there are sometimes i just didn't want to be bothered you know what i'm saying just keep it all the way 100 and i just girl you know i'm thankful that it's over and let me see did i miss anything i probably did and this will probably be a part two. Oh, before you go to surgery make sure you get all the things that you like stocked up in the house and uh, that's from because I was loving Twizzlers uh, cranberry juice ginger ale you don't want to drink a lot of pops and stuff because at this point you're trying to eliminate all that gas that's, that was um, you know pumped up in you so uh, the, the acid pops wasn't really doing it for me but if that's what you like that's what you like uh, make sure you have water on deck um, your favorite foods your favorite snacks because you know you ain't gonna be able to leave out unless your husband go and leave out or you know there's everybody ain't married everybody don't have nobody living with them so you gonna have to get it where you get it um my whole thing was that i like to do things i'm just i'm that girl i'm independent i never like having somebody wait on me that's just ugh when I come home I want to be able to shower my own self I want to be able to go to the bathroom and use the bathroom restroom 
and I don't want nobody in the restroom making sure you know I'm good so I am so grateful and thankful to God for allowing me the strength to be able to bathe my own self even after the surgery um my husband he cooked and everything uh at my husband cooked like different things so i didn't have to cook but now it's been like two weeks i do make like um oatmeal as far as like bending over picking up stuff girl you gonna have to get you one of them little 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 picker upper things from walmart because you can't bend over the stuff that you usually do you can't do like you you know you normally do so when things drop on the floor it's just like oh well i gotta have my husband or my son to go you know pick that up and it's just so tripped out even like i'm like okay i'm at home i could be washing clothes and stuff and i'm like i can't even wash clothes because you gotta pick up that that tide you can't be lifting heavy stuff and i'm like dang so i'll just have my son to sort out the clothes and uh you know we'll take them to the basement and then we'll wash them and stuff like that but um i don't i just like getting it out the way i don't like relying on people so i was able to fold the clothes okay so something. with that being said i hoped i covered everything i know there's a lot of things that um i probably didn't cover if you have any questions or concerns you know what somebody did ask me some questions and i am going to um see if i can answer them really really quick and it says did you remove the belly band when you showered yes you remove your belly band it's just you know this little band right here with the velcro and you just wrap it around your waist you know your waist area and yeah you remove it when you shower i was like wearing this faithfully every day today is the day that i don't have it on but I'm about to put it on in a few minutes. But yeah, you remove it before you shower. And it says, can you can you get the stitches wet in the shower? Yes, you because you have this little look like uh, a clear, I want to say glue or I can't explain it. But it's like, it looks like, it looks like clear tape or something. But I don't know it's not tape. I think it's like some kind of glue that you can get wet. Um... How long does it take for the air that they put inside of your stomach to release so for me it took a good week and a half i just started noticing maybe about two maybe about two three days ago that i'm like my stomach is flat you know uh does the air give you gas pain yes it does it will give you some bad gas to the point where you got to get it out of you so that's why they recommend you to take that gas x but girl go to the store and get you some of this phase on it works for real but get what your doctor tell you to get but you know i knew that i'm probably gonna need something else uh let's see uh why are you winded because in the surgery when they have that uh breathing tube it's just that you know when you coming out of surgery sometimes it takes a lot out of you and you know I was feeling loopy they took the breathing tube out of me I was feeling like I had mucus you know you know built up in my chest and I'm glad that's cleared but that was one of the reasons why I was feeling winded and then it says did you say that you're not on any meds at all no I do have pain medication but I wasn't I wasn't in any pain to take the pain medication so that was great um I only took one ibuprofen and that was uh because you have spasms when you urinate after the surgery because of the the catheter so it, it has this weird feeling when you urinate it's like it's like a an urgency to go but you want to stop it because you don't want it to burn i can't even explain it but it's weird and i'm sure a lot of people that have had that surgery know what i'm talking about it's a weird spasm but it does go away and that's one of the reasons why i did take the ibuprofen and i only took it once and haven't looked back does it hurt when you get up and sit down uh it doesn't hurt it just feels like like your stomach you know how you eat you overeat and you just you stuffed and but you're like stuffed to the 
10 power and it's just like oh my god so you just want to be careful because you got these stitches and you don't want no problems you know what i'm saying you don't want no setback so that's why you kind of like take it easy when you're sitting down and getting up but right now baby boom <laughs> i have on my shorts yeah so that is about it i know i've been on here too too long i don't know how i'm gonna edit this video i just hope you all watch it this is for the girlies who um are about to go through this i want this video for you so that you can see that if i can get through it you can get through it and i'm just telling you not to have fear pray that's number one pray to god repent before you go up in that surgery because you know you about to go put me under so just pray repent just thank god that you're gonna have a speedy recovery and get the things that are needed do what the doctor says relax it's gonna be okay if i can get through it you can get through it so um for all of you all who are about to have this surgery i pray that your surgery be success in jesus name and that you will get through it you'll be fine and you know what I'm going to get off of here. But if you have any questions, you can message me on Instagram. You can message me on Facebook. Not Facebook. You can message me on YouTube. I'm here. I'm at the house, girl. I ain't going nowhere. So, um, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, be blessed. Thank y'all. I love y'all.